So here with me is a past paper of compiled questions uh, with regards to nucleic acid. So start with question one and it reads, which of the following substances does not have hydrogen bonds? Okay, so A is water, B, glycerides, C, DNA, D, transfer RNA, E, polypeptide, F, I don't know. So the correct answer is glyceride. Okay, why did we pick this? Because for A, water does have hydrogen bonds. Okay, uh, DNA has hydrogen bonds in between its um, DNA bases, as well as transfer RNA and um, polypeptides also have hydrogen bonds, depending on the type of uh, uh, structure that has to do with that a polypeptide for instance okay i'll get to explain more of this when we talk about proteins in the other videos so when you look at glycerides glycerides are actually esters of glycerol and um, fatty acids okay so when you look at this uh glyceride okay you notice something like this um okay i hope i've drawn this right and uh, within itself, this is a hydrocarbon uh, chain. So this is another C. So you have this hydrocarbon chain. Now, when you talk about hydrogen uh, bonds, okay, these bonds are intermolecular. So the bonds occur between two molecules. And in this case, within a triglyceride, you will not find um, those intermolecular forces such as the hydrogen bonds as uh, opposed to the other elements that we've talked about okay the second question reads uh which of the following statements is true okay let's so let's use this so which of the following statement is true a the type of dna bases varies from one species to another so this is false b the type of dna bases changes with the age of the organism this is false c the type of dna bases is different in different tissues of an organism D, the type of DNA is the same in all living organisms. E of the above statements are true. F, I don't know. So the correct answer for this question is the type of DNA is the same in all uh, living organisms. So this is because um, we have different DNA bases such as adenine, uh, thymine, cytosine, and guanine, uracil, RNA. But in this case, we're talking about... Um, dna so these bases are the same in all living species however the arrangement is different and this is what uh, causes genetic diversity and uh, specificity okay this is where the dna is the same it just varies in the way um, they are arranged okay Number three, the negative charge of dna is due to the presence of so for this one i'll go directly into our book okay so uh, when you look at um, the nucleotide okay i want you to see something about the way the electrons are distributed so in order to form a, uh, a nucleotide you have this phosphate group okay let me just highlight it here so you have this phosphate group you have the base and you also have uh, sorry, you have the sugar and you have the base right there. So when you look at these charges, you can see that this is uh, partially electronegative. So this tells you that the phosphate group is what gives uh, this genetic structure the negative end. Hence, uh, the answer to the previous question. Number four, the building blocks of DNA are, are called... So I'll go directly to the answer. So this one is straightforward. It's a, a nucleotide. Okay. So the nucleotide are the building blocks of the DNA. Five. What is the role of a DNA? A. To store genetic information. B. To translate the nucleotide sequence into amino acids. C. To transfer nucleotides to ribosomes. D, to transfer amino acids to ribosomes. E, to synthesize protein molecules. F, I don't know. So when you look at this question, basically DNA stores genetic information. If you want to know the information about that particular species, you just get to 
uh, examine or scrutinize their DNA, then you're able to tell. So DNA is meant to store genetic information, okay? This tells us the hair color, the type of eyes, for instance, in human beings, if it's a plant, to tell us the type of, uh, the color of the petals, the height of that plant is all encoded in the uh, genetic uh, code, rather. Six, choose the correct statement. A, purines are single ringed structures. B, purines are two ringed structures. C, Adenine and guanine are pyrimidines. D. Pyrimidines are two ring structures. E. Adenine and uracil are pyrimidines. Okay, so I'll use a, a structure for this so that you are able to uh, see and visualize. So when you look at adenine and guanine, these are purines. Okay, and what you notice about them is that they are two ringed structures. You have one ring there and one other ring, just like guanine. Okay. The, the opposite is true when uh, you come to pyrimidines, okay? Pyrimidines, like you can see there, you have uh, cytosine, you have uracil, you have thymine. All oh, these are single ring. It's just a single ring structure, unlike uh, purines, okay? Uh, question 7. Choose the correct statement. A, a nucleoside is a nucleotide without sugar. B, a nucleotide is a nucleoside without sugar. C, a nucleoside is a nucleotide without a phosphate. D, a nucleotide is a nucleoside plus a base. E, a nucleotide is a nucleoside plus sugar. F, a nucleotide is a nucleoside without a base. G, I don't know. Okay, so when you look at... Uh, Question seven, it's almost as though it's a, a tongue twister. Okay, so I'll go directly to the answer, which is a nucleoside is a nucleotide without a phosphate. Okay, so let's go there. So when you look at um, a nucleotide, okay, a nucleotide will be made of a phosphate group, a sugar, okay, and a base. So when they say, uh, let's go back to our option. When they say that a nucleoside is a nucleotide without a phosphate, this is what they're simply saying. A nucleoside is a nucleotide without a phosphate. So when you, let's use red. So when you remove this phosphate group, it becomes a nucleoside. Okay. However, when you add the phosphate, it becomes a nucleotide. So this is what they mean. A nucleoside is a nucleotide, but without a phosphate group. Okay. Question 8. In the DNA double helix, complementary uh, base pair, bases pair through dash bonds. So this one is direct. So hydrogen bonds um, are what um, bond these complementary base Pairs, okay. Uh, a perfect example is of this a DNA double helix. Okay. Okay, let me find something. Okay, here we go. So when you look at uh, uh, this is a DNA uh, single strand, you look at the bond between adenine and, thy and thymine. The bond in between here is a hydrogen bond. You can see hydrogen is. Uh, attracted to oxygen on the other complementary strand. Nitrogen is is uh, attracted to hydrogen. Yes, so these bonds are what we call hydrogen bonds. And of note is that you also have to note how many bonds actually exist between the two. Okay, so if it's between adenine and thymine, 80, you have two bonds. If it's cytosine and guanine, you have three bonds, one, two, Three okay, this will come in handy in the other uh, questions. Number nine, which of the following was used to determine the structure of DNA? Okay, so there's a bit of history of how um, Rosalind Franklin and, and Morris uh, Wixon actually came up with a DNA structure which is of a, a double helix. Okay, so for instance, this is one strand, this is the other strand. So in order to come up with this, they had um, they used X-ray, X-rays, okay, and it gave them an image that appear that 
had proved that DNA is a double structure. So the X-ray is used to prove that. Question 10. Which pyrimidines and purines are found in nucleic acids? Okay, so to answer, to answer question 10 and 11, I'll combine the two because I'm almost talking about the same thing. All right, let's go to our board. So uh, when, when you look at, um, let's go to the next page. So when you look at uh, purines, okay, purines, we have two types. So you have adenine and guanine. Then uh, pyrimidines, Deans. You have uh, thymine, cytosine, uh, uracil uh, in RNA. Okay, so these are pyrimidines. Okay, purines are, are double ringed, these are single ringed. So now, when you look at this, uh, what you need to know is that the number of adenine and guanine bases should be equal to the, aden to the number of, of uh, thymine, cytosine, or, or uracil. So, this is just to tell you that the number of Purines should be equal to the number of pyrimidines in that ratio. That's why, um, so that means we've answered for both. So pyrimidines, you have uracil, cytosine, and thermine. Purines, you have adenine and guanine, just like we discussed. Then the relationship that is true in DNA is that the number of the purines should be equal to the pyrimidines, Okay. So we go to the next question, 12. We Did you know that on our site uh, platform, we actually have the PDFs of these questions answered in this video? Then on our platform, we have past papers uh, arranged according to topics and also years. So those MCQ questions can help you prepare for your assessments, can be a test, a quiz, or your exam. Then uh, in addition to that, we also have videos that explain all the topics, like each topic has got its own lessons that you can watch to recap whatever you know under each topic. And of course, I highly recommend the past papers arranged according to the topics, like this very one that you are watching. So use the link in the description below to access all the questions and uh, all the other topics.